I am the Statue of Liberty, once crowned in hope, a torch in my hand, a lighthouse on freedom's shores. I was called Lady Liberty. So I started writing poetry in fourth grade, so I would have been about 10, but that was just uh, my teacher, anytime we got work done early, would let us either free write or read a book, and I tended to pick free writing, and a lot of my uh, writing notebook turned into poetry. I took a break from poetry after that though, and then in high school I got into Poetry Slams, which is spoken word uh, with Philadelphia Youth Poetry Movement. So even though spoken word poetry, as the name suggests, is said aloud, it starts with writing, either on paper or a Google Doc. I tend to go for Google Docs since you can switch between your phone and a computer really easily, and it's very easy to edit. It doesn't turn into a bunch of crossouts as you would on paper, although I know some people who like carrying a notebook. My poems uh, tend to be persona poems, which is like taking on a character. I don't tend to perform personal pieces, so for my persona poems, I tend to get ideas from either current events that are in the news, sometimes it's uh, social justice issues, like one time I wrote a poem about climate change. I did do one comedic piece that was just about school projects, but it's usually like take inspiration from life, either from my own or from uh, what's going on around me. And I try not to make it too personal because I'm not a fan of doing that on stage. So after you have your poem written, you're going to want to revise a few times and then eventually start memorizing. So the way I memorize is you take a the first maybe one to three lines, you say it aloud a few times, just reading it. You try to say it off paper a few times, and when you don't have to look at the paper anymore, you take the next couple lines after that, do the same thing. Then you, once you can say the next few lines off paper, you go back to the top and you go from the top to wherever you stopped, and you try to say all of it at once. And it's okay if you mess up, the memorization process takes a lot of tries, you're going to probably say the wrong words, just keep going, and once you can say the whole poem without looking at a paper, you've memorized. A lot of times, like I did this in the beginning, like you'll fall into a pattern. So if I say, I am the Statue of Liberty, once crowned in hope, a torch in my hand, a lighthouse on freedom's shores, I am the Statue of Liberty. I'm saying the lines kind of on a beat, which is good for memorizing. It helps you memorize faster if you're kind of saying each line the same. But on stage, you're gonna to wanna to change up how you're saying each line. And the easiest way to do this is, there's two ways. You're gonna to wanna to emphasize different words. So in my poem, in the first line, I am the Statue of Liberty. I'm not gonna say it like that. I emphasize the word M. So I am the Statue of Liberty. You can also add emotion, so in the beginning of my poem, I'm kind of confident, like, I am the Statue of Liberty, once crowned in hope, a torch in my hand, a lighthouse on freedom's shores. But then later in the poem, I get angry, I get sad, it changes up, and if you keep in mind what emotion, especially for a persona piece, that your character might be having, then it's gonna help you change up those lines and uh, make them sound less robotic. So when you're performing a piece, at least how we do it in Slam League, is you're gonna be standing and you wanna be looking towards the audience, usually pick like a few places, either you're looking at people or you could pick like a couple spots in the room to like, I say a few lines, say a few lines, stay a few lines. You're gonna to wanna to stand up straight, uh, keep your arms kind of relaxed at your sides unless you're doing some kind of choreography. You're gonna want your feet uh, shoulder width apart because it's like a strong stance. If I'm like like this, I kind of losing my balance. I'm kind of like slouching. Like you wanna just be uh, straight. It's almost like a yoga pose in a way, kind of like, because you you wanna make sure your body is well grounded so that uh, you don't feel like you're falling over on stage. And then as you keep going, you can add choreography, you can talk with your hands, but you don't want to make it just like, I'm nervously here. You want to make sure you're like, like in my piece uh, with the Statue of Liberty, there's a line where I say, uh, war refugees and the famine struck. 
and I'm like doing this with my hands, which is choreography, and I'm kind of saying like, come on in, which is not exactly what the line is saying, but the choreography is adding to it. When you're doing a poem, the best way to stay focused is just keep uh, practicing to the point where you can just go all the way through without worrying about messing up. So if you're new to spoken word, what I recommend is, first of all, keep writing. Your writing's gonna get better with time. Uh, and that leads into also, you're going to see poets that this is what they do for the living and they're amazing and you're gonna watch them on YouTube and be like, I really wanna be like them. Or you might even like start being concerned that your writing isn't as good as theirs. And there's a difference between looking up to someone and being like, I wanna get to their level and like putting yourself down. So just understand that even if your poetry, if you think it's not that good right now, if you keep doing it, it's gonna improve over time. Another thing is like in the beginning, like I was very nervous because some people just write, like you'll give them a prompt and they'll just write something amazing on the first draft and I'm someone who needs revision. And that's fine. Also understand that not everyone has the same writing style. One other common mistake is that people will mumble. So if I'm just talking to you, I might not say all the parts of my words. I might say don't instead of like saying the T or like let uh, some consonants like not be pronounced. But when you're saying a poem, you wanna make sure you're opening your mouth and saying every single consonant and vowel because otherwise you're gonna be on stage and people are not gonna understand you. When I did my first poem, there was a line where I said mountains and my coach kept thinking I was saying mounds because I just was not opening my mouth. It's harder after I got braces and some people will use braces as an excuse for that, but it's really just practice. Like it's part of just saying your poem over and over again. I am the Statue of Liberty, once crowned in hope, a torch in my hand, a lighthouse on freedom's shores. I was called Lady Liberty, war refugees in the famine struck, all seeking better lives by the boatload, pointing up at me like I was some goddess answering their prayers, golden and shiny like the roads in the fabled American dream. But I was merely a facade, a lie, used to mask the uncaring policies of countless politicians. Go ahead, breathe the word liberty while defunding schools. Say freedom and deny health care. Speak of justice and the people forget their poisoned water. Only a few decades until American greed turned this skin as green as the wicked witch. Billionaires unwilling to give away a few tax dollars to those in need, even if it meant violating human rights. A flick of the pen changed my promise from, give me your tired, your poor, to I will give them more fear. From your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, to I will send them back from here. Mother of exiles reduced to cold, metal figure, with no yellow brick road to chase a heart down. Just water, rising on all sides of me. I am drowning in the tears of those by presidential decree I must now deny entry. Watch false hope fly back and forth above my head. Airports the new Ellis Island. Families waiting by the phone that never rings. Refugees who spent years fashioning a key out of paperwork turn back at the gates upon landing. Their destinies changed while their plane is in air. You called me a golden door, yet used me as a wall. All they asked your government for was a chance to live, to be seen as human instead of statistical casualty. Your president responded to protests of his ban by saying, America is still the home of the free and the land of the brave, but I guess anyone not straight white male Christian need not apply. The true gatekeepers will turn anyone else away. Thank you very much. This really is the group. What a great group of people. Liberty has no room in a realm of alternative facts and daily executive orders. I am merely a historical monument a tribute to the utopian version of the American dream, once filled with democracy and hope, a daydream hiding a darker destiny. Scars of racism and hate picked out until they bleed again. Descendants of those who once looked up to me leave old lady liberty as a forgotten museum piece. The hope in my promise no longer lives, and the dream has died. <laughs>